Um, let's uh, open it up to some questions from the floor. Um, yeah, gentlemen there, if you just wait, wait for the mic. They won't do it here, and that's why we're going to have startups who are going to be eating everyone else's lunch. OK. We'll have you back yeah. on the stage when, when, when we we'll have years, a panel of those startups. In five years, let's, we'll see what happens. And if you look at the list of startups of those companies, they are all startups. They're all mm -hmm. new companies. Mm -hmm. And you look at that S&P 500, they're all new companies. Yes. Yes, go ahead. So, so you asked a question to the crowd about um, how many companies were uh, increasing innovation? By asking the non-normal people. So I'd ask a different question. How many companies that we, we all work at are inhibiting innovation? Because I think that's the bigger problem. And I suspect there'd be a lot more hands go up if you ask that question. How do you see they're, in, they're inhibiting? Um, well, I, mean, I think you've done a lot of research, I'm sure, on it. And, and the problem is, as you innovate and actually um, succeed, you challenge the pecking order, if you will, the status quo. And what I've found is, surprisingly, it's a very powerful force. In fact, overwhelming sometimes, because you actually think it's, it makes sense to actually make things better, but you're disrupting the, the power base. Um, I do think that, and I had this sentence, and I used to work in public health, and so when I wrote this sentence in the book, I thought how clever I was with my metaphor. <laughs> it's like the antibodies rush in and kill the new thing. Um, but I think what's important is, and difficult, is if the CEO at the head says, I've blessed this mechanism like in Unilever. I've blessed, the, I've blessed this mechanism for finding innovation, and we're going to do this by hook or by crook. But yeah, so I think what you're saying is absolutely true. And so, yeah, it's much more successful if you have the person at the top who is saying, go. Um, other questions out there? It's got to come right from the top, right? Yeah. 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 Good. So I'm on the board of directors of a global group that brings improvisation skills and mindsets into non-theatrical application like business. And I'm just really curious, so we're growing, there's an alignment of, of how we're growing, and, and I'm curious about the skill sets that you're seeing as required for the collaborative economy um, and, and what is really helping companies to thrive in terms of a skill set and a mindset. Hmm. So I would say, we've touched on these, that leadership has to believe that the, prob the answers can come from outside. They can't believe that we know everything and that we're going to get it right. And they have to believe in the power of iteration, that um, some, there will be failure and that, that the job is to keep iterating and getting better because, yes, so I, you do do that in improv. Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, we'll go here and then we'll come over here. Right here, yeah. Just looking at some of these com uh, companies within Peers Inc, take two of them, for example, Uber and Airbnb. I'm a regular user, I love them, and I get the business model that it solves, but I also think it creates problems in its own right. For example, looking at climate change, um, which you've touched on in the lecture, Uber and Airbnb encourages people to continue traveling, continue air travel. Uber, on a Saturday night now, for example, I'm able to, instead of wait for a night bus, get an Uber to my front door, and which only increases my carbon footprint, for example. So I was just Absolutely. keen to... It's a fair point. Um, so I, I want to be clear, Peers Inc. is an organizational paradigm that you can use in any which way you want. And my point is, we have this giant problem, let's use it on this problem. Um, I'm not worried about Uber, because autonomous vehicles are just going to be completely taking everything else out, and they'll be electric. Um, and Airbnb, I think it is a challenge for them, and they've done, a lot, they've done some research around Airbnb versus a hotel is dramatically lower carbon footprint, but indeed, we are flying to get there. 
it's unclear if people are flying more. I think they're flying a little bit more because their whole vacation package is cheaper. But the hotel, the hotel living, restaurant, cleaning, washing is a lower footprint. But piercing doesn't necessarily have to be that at all. I'm just, but it is more resource efficient. Mm. Okay. Yep. Uber is just Kevin. like taxis in any case. It's not nothing to do with anything else. Yes. Tonight, um, is this working? Yes. Yep. My name is Peter Knight. I'm chairman of uh, the Context Group. Um, I'm sorry you think that Zipcar is not working very well because it works great for me, oh, and it and it's lovely. better than it was before because they sorted out the insurance problem. So um, it's it's a great service. No, his question was around. It is a great service. His question was around the um, the brand and the brand, and I would say the brand has at least in the US where I see advertising, has made some serious misses in its, in its branding. But no, the service is great. OK. So, so the question, and thank you very much for an inspiring uh, talk. Um, you, you spoke very clearly about the principles behind how we should approach climate change. But you didn't, I, I found it really difficult to understand what I should do. So what are you going to do at the end of this evening? And what should I do at the end of this evening to follow your principles? Um, so, I as an individual have a, except for the airplane tickets, um, I have a very, very low carbon life. I think everyone in this room who's not a vegetarian should be ashamed of themselves and should become a vegetarian. And if not, you should only be eating meat very infrequently. That's 30% of CO2 emissions done. People should be like I am, using public transportation, walking and bicycling as much as possible, almost never getting in a car, which Zipcar does beautifully. So Zipcar forces you to rationalize, should I go by car or by other mode? They should be, are you voting? And are you telling your, your we have COP21 coming up. Are you telling those people? So those, as an individual, are things you should be doing. As companies, the COP21 is happening. And are you, are you internally, internally, depending on your role, have you put a carbon price? Have you, are you figuring out how to reduce, uh, how you figure how to get fossil fuels out of your, your particular company? That absolutely has to happen. Have you figured out how to make things more sustainable? And, and, one, and yeah. another thing I just want to add here, but I, you didn't mention, but it's mentioned in the book, companies like Sun City and Solar Mo Mosaic yeah. that make signing up to getting a solar panel much quicker and much easier. Right. And that's right. all part of this piercing yes. So platform. if you're going to create a brand new company, so if you're going to create a brand new company, or perhaps on your own, so just those examples. Um, my husband is an MIT engineer, and we put solar on our roof. It took seven, year, seven months for him to figure out what is the tax code, what is the right kind, am I facing the right way, Have a, who's the contractor who's going to do it, solar city and um, many others have made it one-stop shopping. So, and they've done the financing, the financing calculations. So I say, here's my address. They say, oh, your roof looked good. Here, I've got the five different types of ways. Which one do you want to do it? You will be better off. Your electric bill will be reduced, in, including the financing. So they've made a complicated, tricky, onerous, difficult thing. You can do it in five minutes. So we need to make more of those types of companies. We, we, we could do a whole, I, I've got to move it on, but we could do a, You've told us the things that NGOs have been telling us for our entire lives. Yeah. You have told us nothing new. What is, what is new about this that, that we new? haven't been so told I'm, before? I'm you, you can't get your child to switch off the lights. Mm. We've tr struggled to get our children to switch off the lights. So what is new about your principles and how Nest. is this going to change? So Nest should be observing what I'm doing and Nest should be doing that. It's going to be the platform for participation in smart homes, which is why I believe Google bought it is that it will be making those calculations for me. Distributed energy, how are we gonna get distributed energy? Similarly, we're gonna get all those people to put it on their roofs because it's gonna be simpler. People who are, the transportation, autonomous vehicles are gonna be making it so that the calculation for me to use public private transportation, right now 80% of all cars on the road are single occupancy in the public transportation, autonomous vehicle worldview that I'm hoping to make happen, those cars will be completely filled. And so you'll be doing the same thing you've ever done. You'll be using your app, doing something selfishly, and it'll be an efficient car, an electric car, maximizing the number of people. So we need to be building companies that are using these principles to extract 
our best behaviors out of us, and we will be participants. I'll be giving you my data, I'll be giving you my money I was going to be spending on my electric plan, I'll be giving you all the things I do and buy, and you'll be making it much more efficient for all me right. to do. We could have a whole session on this, without a doubt, an hour and yes. a half. Uh, maybe that is an idea for the future. Yeah, go ahead. Hi there. Um, hi, Marie from Zopa here. Um, Slightly different question. You touched on it briefly uh, by mentioning automation, and um, I'm going to put words in your mouth. I guess artificial intelligence plays into that specific task-based artificial intelligence. Do you think um, how will that impact this model, the Peers Inc. model? Will it eat into the peers or the Inc., or do you actually believe it? It doesn't really. It, it can only be beneficial and and accelerate the pace of these platforms coming ar around because I guess automation and algorithms and artificial intelligence does also rely on on humans feeding in knowledge from the, from the real world to actually model on? Um, inside my own mind, I am right now trying, I look at this issue around climate change and while I was sort of blunt, I don't know if, we, if you understood the bluntness, I have climate scientist friends who are saying, who have written to me, because I've said, have I got the facts right? And they said, hundreds of millions of people are going to die in my lifetime and I can do nothing about it. So if I look at the scale and reality of this problem face on, we're going to have billions of people who are going to die. The refugees that are coming from Syria are climate refugees. And we're going to be having that happen in huge hordes. So the question before me is, what am I willing to trade off in order to get this challenge done? And so what I see around automation and around things like the autonomous car is it is going to be taking out so much labor. And am I willing to, am I willing to make that trade-off? And I think I am willing to make that trade-off because what is my alternative? I've I'm just created and put together and I'm giving a talk at Harvard on just the week before Thanksgiving where I'm going to be posing this question to people who study privacy, data, and, um, and security, what are we going to be willing to trade off when we have the Internet of Things, which will make us dramatically more efficient because we'll be able to have real-time dynamic pricing for energy, for road use, for consumption. What am I, what am I not, now everyone knows every breath I take. So what, what are we willing to trade off and how can we craft things so that we can not have the hell version, but we can have a pleasant one. And to the pleasant one, humans are really, they really are great at pattern recognition. We really are great at innovation. We really all have passions and we are good at relationships. Let's let automation do what it's supposed to be doing. We have 40% of, I was reading a book, 40% of jobs are like garbage <laughs> junk jobs. Let's get rid of them. Why are we doing those so people can earn some, earn this pathetic living that we are providing them. We have all this productivity gains to come. Let's share the productivity gains and start doing things that we are good at and let the automation happen. You know, I know there are lots of other questions out there, and I, 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 which is a Sorry. very, very good sign. And I, uh, and I apologize that we can't come to those questions now uh, because we do have to wrap. Uh, I'm going to just finish up with one final question, and it's sort of come full circle where I started. Um, in 2012, you said, there's a book yearning to come out of me. All I need is the time. Uh, you found mm -hmm. the time. You wrote the book. And we thank you for that. Um, what's yearning to come out now? Apart from the solution to climate change. Yeah. Well, what surprised me as I was writing the book and as I was coming down this back end is the whole income inequality piece. I have to say it was on my radar like this much. I hadn't played through the implications. So now I am much more interested in how I can help governments and individuals make that transition, or intellectually. Mm -hmm. um, we were just talking briefly, and maybe we can do my survey here. Yeah, maybe okay. we can. Here's a, here's a quick show of hands. The question is, are we going to evolve fast enough as countries and companies and planet or are we going to have a revolution, a very disruptive, nasty change? And so there's two options, but I'm going to ask first one, right, so you can vote. Do you think we will have evolution to solve these problems, these issues? Okay. And do you think we're going to have revolution to solve these changes? So wow. what I'm seeing is what I'm seeing worldwide. 
is that revolution is winning. And it is mind-boggling to me that I ask the CEOs and I ask my Lyft driver in Manhattan. Um, and so I was just expressing this. I met a person whose job is peace building. And when I said this to her, she, had a, she was just terrified. Um, and she said, what do people think when they say revolution? And she said, you've got to, when people say that, you have to tell them, we all need to double down on the pace of evolution because evolution is millions of, it's, it's, rev, revolution gives you three decades of chaos, death, insecurity, and disaster. And so we all need to work at double the pace. So when you ask me, what do I feel like I want to be doing now? I feel like I really, I'm focused, I can now say the sentence as of just like four days ago, I want to figure out how to speed the pace of evolution in whatever way I can, because that is what I think we have to be doing. All right. Robin Chase, thank you very much indeed. Thank you.